What's going on guys, it's Jerome Mom back at it again with another episode of NBA Kicks, the show where we count down the top 10 best sneakers in the NBA every single week of the season. This week's episode is crazy guys. We have a controversial sneaker, we have another sneaker that I had no idea even existed, and then we got another sneaker that debuts one of the best signature sneaker logos that I have seen in a very long time. In my opinion, this is the best episode of the season so far, but I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Let's play the intro. Welcome to another episode of NBA Kicks. Starting off the list at number 10, we have a weird situation from Kyrie Irving. All right, so this is somewhat of an unconventional pick because it comes from a very unconventional situation, but I feel like we have to talk about it because if we don't, we'd honestly be ignoring one of the biggest stories in the NBA Kicks world. So obviously Kyrie has had a very turbulent season for reasons that I'm not going to get into, but I will acknowledge that Nike has officially terminated their partnership with Kyrie. However, he is still rocking his Nike signature sneakers on the court, albeit in a very weird fashion. Kyrie has essentially blacked out or covered up the Nike swoosh on all of his sneakers since his termination, and in some cases has even put text over the swoosh, such as logo here, which is kind of funny in an off-white type of way, or by putting I am free, thank you God I am. Personally, I think that's a little bit strong because essentially what happened was the biggest sportswear brand in the history of sportswear brands fired Kyrie Irving. And look, I'm not here to choose sides, so I'm not really gonna pick like one or the other, but I will say that I do hope that Kyrie eventually ends up with another brand because he was quite possibly the most popular signature athlete on Nike's roster, you know, before everything went down. And there have been rumors that New Balance is interested into bringing him onto their roster. So it would be really interesting to see what Kyrie Irving could do with another brand. But let me know where you guys think Kyrie should land or if he should land anywhere at all. Remember guys, be respectful in the comment section. I know this is kind of a, a touchy subject, but I am genuinely interested to hear what you guys have to say. So go ahead and drop those comments. Next up at number nine, we have Trey Young with the Trey Young 2. Ice Trey takes a page out of the Michael Jordan playbook with this newest colorway of his second signature sneaker. Over the years, Jordan Brand has dropped a number of colorways that are all inspired by the opponents Michael Jordan defeated throughout his career, like the Seattle 10s. And Trey Young is seen rocking a New York Knicks inspired colorway of the Trey Young 2 with a classic blue and orange color scheme, but also a King of Broadway tag on the heel. This colorway is also rounded out with a gum bottom outsole, which is always a fan favorite. But come on guys, you gotta respect the audacity of Trey Young and Adidas to drop a Knicks inspired colorway after what he did to the Knicks during that one playoff run. But I repeat, that one playoff run. It's not like Trey Young beat them in the finals or multiple times in the postseason. So I don't know if Adidas and Trey think that they're on Michael Jordan's level of dominance over a franchise or a city yet, but you kind of got to respect the confidence. Next up at number eight, we have D'Angelo Russell with the Way of Way 10. So instead of rocking his own signature sneaker, D'Lo rocks the Way of Way 10. But have you guys seen D'Lo's logo before? In my opinion, that is one of the best and most creative logos that I have seen in a long time. And you guys know I'm a huge stickler when it comes to signature logos. And for me, this logo for D'Angelo Russell is almost perfect. Obviously, you have the letter D, which stands for D'Angelo, but it's made from this kind of loading style font, which is just perfect for his social media handle, D-Loading but I'm also just a fan of the overall art style that it uses, as I think it's a really classy look, and again, fits in perfectly with the player and their branding. And oh yeah, the Way Way 10s look pretty awesome as well, and they even kind of remind me of the Jordan Flyweight ones with a similar cut and sculpted midsole design. 
But again, I'm mainly putting these on the list because of that logo, but I could be overrating it. Let me know what you guys think. I think it's awesome. Coming in at number seven, we have Jeremy Grant with the Guild Boost Resto Mod from Adidas. Jeremy Grant rocks a new colorway of the updated signature silhouette from the mid 2000s, which was actually made with recycled content. This colorway is a USA themed colorway, as you could tell with the red, white, and blue color scheme. But Adidas has also added some dark metallic gold hits, as well as a marbled gum bottom outsole and a faux snakeskin pattern on the upper. On top of all of that, you have a gill graphic scattered throughout the entire overlay, making for a very complex design, which does have a lot going for it, but good on Adidas for making something that is a little bit more sustainable than your average sneaker, and for keeping the gill boost alive with some new colorways like this. Next up at number six, we have Kyle Kuzma with the TRC Blaze Court from Puma. Now, if you're anywhere close to my age, this new colorway that Kyle Kuzma rocked during his game against the Bulls, it's gonna get you really excited. Growing up, I was a huge Pokemon fan. So seeing this Gengar colorway on the foot of an actual NBA player is pretty nostalgic for me. And personally, I think the results are awesome as well. You got a purple, red, black, and white color scheme, as well as a Gengar hang tag and Gengar graphic on the tongue. Now, my personal favorite Pokemon is Hitmonlee, but I doubt if I'm ever going to see a sneaker inspired by him. So we're going to have to settle for this Gengar colorway, but that's okay because Gengar is pretty underrated. But what I want to know is, is Gengar Kuzma's favorite Pokemon or is this just a coincidence? Next up at number five, we have Montrez Harrell with the Louis Vuitton Trainer 2. Okay, so this is quite possibly the craziest, most audacious, most gaudy, and unforgettable sneakers that I have ever covered on this show. Montrez Harrell rocks the Louis Vuitton Trainer 2, which I didn't even know existed, but apparently they do a basketball sneaker from Louis Vuitton, which according to their website has things like calf leather, seven hours of stitching for one pair, and, and take a look at this guy's outfit that he's rocking with them. Yeah, this guy's definitely not a hooper. Oh yeah, and did I mention that this shoe costs $1,660, which is a weird price, and of course, a lot of money to be rocking in an actual NBA game, but Montrez is one of the most prolific players on NBA Kicks. And once again, he never ceases to amaze me, but even though I have a Louis Vuitton wallet myself, I personally wouldn't rock these on the court. I mean, they just look super bulky, they're obviously too expensive, and they're probably not even meant to play basketball in. They're probably just inspired by basketball sneaker design. So I, I wouldn't rock these on the court. You're not gonna see a performance review for me, but it's still cool that Trez rocked them in an actual NBA game. Next up at number four, we have Jalen Williams with the Adi Zero Rose 1.5. Using that iconic South Beach color scheme with the light pink and blue, this colorway has an off-whitish upper, which could represent the sands of South Beach. Or not, I'm really not too sure. At the end of the day, this is a new colorway of an old sneaker that actually works. Usually I'm not a huge fan of new colorways of old iconic silhouettes, but every once in a while it does work like it does here. But I am curious to know what Derrick Rose thinks about this colorway because the team in South Beach kind of owned him in the playoffs. So this isn't like a Trey Young situation or Michael Jordan situation that I talked about from before. It's kind of the opposite. Next up at number three, we have LaMelo Ball with the Puma MB02. Okay, Puma knows exactly what they're doing here. This new colorway of LaMelo Ball's second signature sneaker is what I call a finesse. Last year, the MB01s were quite possibly the most popular sneaker of the entire NBA season. In fact, I gave them the number one spot in my end of year NBA Kicks episode because everywhere I went, I was seeing the MB01s. And the most popular colorway of the MB01s were hands down the Rick and Mortys. This time around on the MB02s, Puma is using a very similar color scheme. However, they dropped the Rick and Morty branding and are calling these the Slimes. 
Now, I'm not denying that these are inspired by slime. I mean, you could see it on the Puma logo right there as well as with the color scheme, but that hint of crimson and volt upper is very reminiscent of half the Rick and Morty colorway, but since they are technically not the Rick and Mortys, Puma doesn't have to pay to use those rights, but it's essentially the same sneaker. That is the definition of a finesse, but overall, I think this is a really awesome sneaker. Obviously, I love the colorway, but beyond that, I think the MV02s are way better looking than the ones. And if you think that as well, this slime collection just dropped on Puma.com, which you can check out with the link down below. And just to be clear, Puma has not paid me at all to put that link down below. Legally, if they did, I would have to tell you, like I would get in a lot of trouble if I didn't. And I'm telling you guys right now on the record, they haven't. But it does help support the channel a little bit. So if you want to support the show and show your boy some love, go ahead, click the link down below and cop yourself a new pair of kicks. Coming in as our runner up, we have De'Aaron Fox with the Curry One Low Flotro. So to my knowledge, De'Aaron Fox is a sneaker free agent and he's been mainly seen rocking Converse's throughout the season. But during his game against the Bulls, he was actually rocking a pair of Under Armors. This colorway of the Curry One Flow Tro is an updated version of the Candy Rain colorway from the OG Curry Ones. And in my humble opinion, this updated look is light years better than the originals. The Sour Patch print on the upper is vivid and clear, unlike the last iteration, which just looked like a bunch of melted Sour Patch Kids and not even the good flavors. So big ups to Under Armour for improving the look of this original colorway. Now as for Fox and where he'll eventually end up as a sneaker free agent, I honestly don't really know. I I'm a little confused by it as well because Fox is having a good year and the Kings are finally relevant. So it seems to me that Fox or whoever should make a pretty quick decision here to get maximum exposure. Look, I mean, wherever he ends up, Under Armour, Converse, Puma, New Balance, somewhere else, I think Fox is good enough to get a sneaker deal. There are players out there with lesser ability and talent that have sneaker deals. So I think he should get picked up, but where that is, I, I honestly don't know. Finally, at number one, we have Jason Tatum with the debut of the Air Jordan 37 Low. All right, so here we have our first look at the low top version of the Air Jordan 37, which looks like a totally different sneaker. Aside from the identical midsole and outsole design, the upper on the lows has been completely reworked with new overlays while maintaining that same lightweight mesh material on the underlay. This new construction looks like it could possibly be a little bit more durable and even a little more supportive than the high tops, which does make sense since a chopped off version of the Jordan 37 high tops would probably be a little too flimsy. As for the colorway that JT is rocking here, it's a pretty solid one with a purple and orange color scheme, but JT also rocked a black and red colorway, which personally I like a little bit better, but it's something that isn't as creative as the purple and orange one. So officially, I gotta give the purple ones the number one spot as the best sneaker worn in the NBA during week six of the 2022-23 season. Hopefully you guys enjoyed your time on the channel here, which if you did, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button because it helps me out a ton. That's really all I want for Christmas. So if you want to give me a gift, like, subscribe, throw a comment, say something. The Jerome Mob is strong. I love you guys all. I hope you have a great holiday. My name is Jaren. It's been great having you. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.